I know. It makes you feel like you've got to sit up there. All right, we're rolling. We are. We are actually rolling. That was the intro. This um, podcast is brought to you by no sponsors thus far. If you'd like to sponsor the show, yeah, contact us. Um, this song is by Led Zeppelin, and I can't remember the name. Um. <laughs> Is that, is, is that how we're going to have to start the show every single time? That's how most of these podcast shows start. I think we should just do the same no introduction thing, because otherwise we end up <laughs> humming out Led Zeppelin for some apparent reason. Yeah. All right, so I, like, I guess where I want to kind of start this thing is, can you tell me what's annoyed you this weekend? Yeah, this is... It's been a thing, right? Like, I don't know if I'm getting older and like things annoy me more because of that. And being older, you just get more annoyed about things. But when it comes to the weekend, right? <coughs> and you work... <coughs> my bad. It's all good. You work like, you know, you work in a nine-to-five kind of situation or whatever. You look forward to that weekend, right? Mm-hmm. The problem is everyone else is looking forward to that weekend. So you get into situations like, I wanted to go see Suicide Squad. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard mixed things about that. Yeah, that's got terrible reviews and stuff. Um, I'll give it my own bad review somewhere along the line right. in this. But basically, like... I went to the Ritzy in Brixton, it was sold out, you know, okay. so that, that pissed me off instantly because I've left my house like, and it didn't say it was sold out on the website, you know, I should have booked tickets then. I can't currently book tickets because of my bank, that's another thing that's annoying me. Um, talk about that at another point. <laughs> so I went to the Ritzy, cool, alright, fair enough, you sold out, that's annoyed me. I've gone to the Odeon now because that's like a bus away. Yep. I'm 26 years old, right? And the Suicide Squad is a 15, all right? <laughs> so when I got ID'd for it, I wasn't in the best sort of mind state to deal with that. I don't have a bank card on me. I didn't have like an insurance type card. They asked if I had an adult Oyster card, which I don't know how that proves anything because like mm. it just looks like an Oyster card. Um, I don't know how a bank card is like acceptable fucking like... ID because at the end of the day, if I wanted to get into a movie so bad, yeah, then I could probably get someone's bank card. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I had a bank card at like 12 or 13. Or exactly. Maybe you get one when you set up an account. And even if you get one, it just has a name on it. It doesn't yeah. have a picture. It doesn't have anything to prove. So no. I could have went outside, robbed a bank card and said, oh yeah, I have my bank card on me. What, so did they say that if you had your bank card, they would have let you in? Yeah. No, nah, that's just... <laughs> so, that's snobbery. That, so that's the mistake. And we argued. I didn't get into the cinema. That's whatever. Um, and I went to the third cinema, and by this point I was seriously pissed off. Um, and the thing is, I'm there, I'm waiting, I've gone through, they don't, they don't know that I've gone through this situation, but at the end of the day, they then made me wait at this new cinema for up to 10 minutes for my ticket. I asked what's going on with the ticket, and the problem with the ticket is that they tell me that they have one ticket machine between two people. (laughs) Right, which is like two these two registers link into one printing machine, which is like in 2016 that shouldn't exist, no. right? <laughs> right? Do you know what I mean? Doesn't exist. It shouldn't exist. I don't know why you're sharing. Whatever. It's not school. There's not one printer. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like so, I start to get annoyed at this point. I ask what the holdup is, and she tells me that they only have one printer between two tills. So at that point, I'm pissed off. I've been ID'd. Duh. She's also asked me for ID. I reluctantly pull out my ID, whatever. I'm really annoyed about it. Um, and I just broke into a thing to tell them, look, yeah, this, this is 2016, right? If I go to the cinema, if I'm going to the cinema, first you've got to understand, I could have illegally downloaded this movie at any point, but I've decided <laughs> that I want to give your dying fucking company, right, a bit of money, yeah? Because, like, hey, like, I like the cinema. Like, at the end of the day, who doesn't like it's the cinema? It's an experience, man. Exactly. You pay for an experience, but yeah. the problem is... The experience sucks now. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? What are you paying for? Like, they don't pause the movie if I want to go toilet. So I mean, that's it's never been the case that they pause the movie if you need to go to the toilet. <laughs> but I, I just piss before and try not to drink too many fluids during the film. Yeah. I actually get like I get a personal annoyance with people who get up to go to the toilet during the film because I'm kind of like y- you're gonna miss it. Can't you just hold it? Like no, you can't just hold it. <laughs> yeah, but then like you've missed like ten minutes of the film, or like I don't know. It depends how long a piss you need. But like I, I I hate people that walk out during the film. Yeah. And do you ever clock those people that walk out to go to the toilet during the film and you never see them come back again? Because you just yeah. clock the people that leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's like, but the film's good. Yeah, but 
Well, you left Captain America. Yeah, Captain America 1 was possibly one of the worst films of all time. <laughs> I don't think that, that can be, like... As soon as like, there was the flaming bit where he went, goes to jump over half of a warehouse, I was just like, nah, man, like, I'm, I'm going to leave. Yeah. This film is dog shit. I stand by it. That film is absolute dog shit. <laughs> like, I know you've told me they've got better in time and the newer ones are good. Yeah, but that, it has. that Well, I've, the, number one ruined it for me. Yeah. I can't go back. <laughs> so, so I had that going on. And, you know, like, so they won't stop. They don't let you go to the toilet. That's, I understand that is what it is. Yeah. They overcharge you on the popcorn, which I understand, because the reason they overcharge you on popcorn is because that's the only way they make money. They don't yeah. make any money anywhere else. And I've been told this. Yeah. And then... Um, it just resulted in me saying, look, I said all of these things to her, and then I said, and that's the reason you won't have a job in the next few years. Yeah, probably over I mean, no, yeah, that's, that's well over the top. <laughs> what, what had she done? This is probably why you won't have a job. Because cinemas <laughs> can't supply you with two machines, this is why this poor girl will not have a job. Do you know the thing? I felt bad about it, because I said it to her, but I also said it to the guy that was on the other till that was creating the hold-up, and... She didn't mind. She sort of looked at me like, yeah, I know my job's shit. He, however, was like mid-40s and sort of like... Oh, that's deep. Yeah, like, this is my life, <laughs> like, you know? That's deep. Yeah, so... Yeah, that happened. That was the most annoying thing, I think. Oh, and then the other thing, I went to fucking go get some paint from B&Q, and I needed some special paint to paint on plastic. Uh, no, none of the... They have multiple helpers on hand, and none of the helpers could help me in the situation. Yeah, but I think like this is a, this is another thing that's annoying about like modern generation is that everyone relies on machines to do everything, so you don't necessarily um, go out of your way to learn stuff. And maybe these people yeah. haven't been working on paint. Maybe like maybe they've. Bro, this guy it, was like ninety two, yeah. Like I like he yeah, was but, like the fucking key keeper of paint, you know? Like he was at, the at paint keeper. Do you, like, do you feel that B and Q all he's been working on is the paint? I would hope so. But the like, B&Q, it's, it's, it's a hardware emporium. There's fucking shit going on everywhere. <laughs> like, you can't rely on, like, 92 paint keeper to fucking know everything about <laughs> something that'll stick on a plastic. But as I said to the other woman, I said, can you tell me the chemical makeup of this paint so I can match it to another one? And she couldn't answer me. And I felt, like, No, that, that's an insane thing to ask. <laughs> what an insane thing Why to ask. Why are you hired, then? What, to, to tell you the chemical, like, production of the paint? Yeah, man. If you walked into like a cobbler's and you were like, yo, I need to know the chemical makeup of that leather, yeah? He'd be like, this was old yeah, Bessie, she was on farm lot, da 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 A lot simpler like, to talk about. <laughs> the chemical construction <laughs> of paint. There's yeah. like, there's a million ingredients in paint. Yeah, I just wanted to know if it was the same and if I could match it with something I could put on plastic. It's simple. Yeah, but did you phrase it as the chemical structure? Yeah, I did. She did That's she, why. Yeah, she's she, gone, does this stick on plastic like this other paint? That's what she said to me. She said, do you mean, does it stick on plastic? And I said, well, yeah. Yeah. And then she said no. And I was like, well, fuck this. I fucking, <laughs> yeah, do you she, know what? You know what? It's know. hilarious. I'm a 26 year old man. And I was yeah. so annoyed. Yeah. That I fucking, I was going to buy a dustpan and brush because I also needed one of those. And when she said that, I walked off and just threw yeah. it into the aisle. Just, just it's so spiteful. <laughs> it's so spiteful. <laughs> Had you paid for it? No. Just, so you just went and dashed it. And uh, walked, it's like, not my you, problem now. I'm not going to purchase the paint. I'm not going to purchase the dustpan. Did and brush. you look? Did you look her in the eyes as you did it? Or no, was I it just like old fucking paint keeper ninety two when oh I threw it in his direction. Lord. That you're a bad person. I mean, like, I, <laughs> I love those potential outbreaks. But, I mean, they're passive aggressive. All they're going to do is going to have to go and clean it up. But you've just, like, walked away, dashed it away, like, you've thrown your jacket to the side and just, like, left. Are you odd job? Yeah. Why are you, like, just, like <laughs> frisbeeing fucking dustpan and brushes down an aisle? It's like, oh, man. I think, I think that is outrageous behavior. I was pissed off. And at the end of the day, like I'm saying, when you've got a nine to five job situation and you only have two days to go get this stuff done and you yeah. go to your local retailer and they're like we don't know what chemical makeup this paint is so i'm sorry that like you would you know i mean, mean i feel like even though they didn't know the chemical makeup of the paint they knew whether it's stuck on plastic which yeah. was the key thing that you needed to yeah, find out yeah and they were like oh no it's sold out it's like we'll get some fucking more then because it's a fucking sunday afternoon yeah and i've got five more days before i come back and visit you so oh, paint and plastic might be popular at the moment <laughs> exactly yeah but like just because you were late to the queue and getting accommodated, you can't blame the like. No, but I can blame the society. That's society's fault. And did society learn by chucking that dustpan down that aisle? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, feel, I feel like you're trying to teach society, but really just pissing off 92 year old <laughs> paint keeper. Like, I don't feel like you taught anyone a lesson. You just probably made someone guy 
Aww. No, and then I, I have to go and pick it up. Do you know what? They probably looked at me and was like, that 15-year-old is really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he could probably not get into a cinema. Yeah, exactly. Like, So, yeah, that was it. That was my weekend. That's why I didn't come see you. You... you you had some fun shit. I don't know what you would have got annoyed about. It, well, like, it was, yeah, it was, it was kind of some fun shit. It was kind of, like, life-threatening. <laughs> I think, like, you being there and just having an extra person of support that potentially wouldn't have to stand at the back of the group as we walked through an abandoned asylum could have been there. Instead, I had to walk at the back of the group Yeah, but and do I'm, like, half black, so I would have died Possibly. 0.5 quicker before anyone else. But the thing is, is that just a horror film cliche or is that real? I'm also a virgin, so... Shit. There you go. <laughs> and you smoke weed. Yeah, I'm pretty much everything horror movies want everything to Everything that happens in horror movies, you are like encapsulating into one single person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I'd, like, it was a bad asylum, man. I, I don't know if I was like... <laughs> it was fucked. There was just so many things about it that were disturbing. There was like these massive blown up pictures that were taken actually when the asylum was functional from the perspective of where the cameraman was standing and put in the exact same place that the picture would have actually originally featured. And you just think like, okay, so these are some, loads of like people are like breaking in, there's kids. I'm yeah. sure all these dicks drawn on the walls are like done by a child. But this incredibly uh, introspective photo that yeah. likely was taken 30 years ago, whose idea was to put, get them and put them in the exact same places that they were. And there was four series of, of this in one building that was particularly fucked up. In the same building, it had like, like it was like scratched into the wall, mum, he's here and yeah, stuff see, like... Yeah, see, I would have been gone at that if, point. If, if you're, you, like, knowing human beings is like being in a mechanic, you'll only really know what they are when you take them apart, 666. And then, <laughs> that like, sounds like a Drake lyric. Bro, six, 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 six. <laughs> As soon as I get to the city, I'm pulling my eye. Um, <laughs> man, but fucking, you, you just filled with fucking like fear. I was just like, you know what? I can't even throw Sh Shox's kids in the way. They're like his children. Like, he'll, he'll feel a certain way about it. Shox isn't going to get killed first. I'm like, Shocks his little kids getting real scared. Yeah, and I'm the what. human sacrifice. I'm going to have to be the human <laughs> sacrifice. I'm at the back of the room. And like, we keep hearing weird little noises. There's like, really, like, there's these, they're, they're, they're like satanic symbols that someone's got to know their shit to know. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. over the building. And there's just like weird stuff. There's fucking nail drag marks going into a wall. Like, they're from the wall's direction, but there's a solid wall there that no one could be grabbing for, oh, mate. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I made, I made shocks, like, half kick in the door, and then I give it one last boot, so we just had another exit in this building. <laughs> like, you know what, mate? This might fucking get peak for us, fam. Uh, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't. <laughs> shout out, shocks. But, like, um, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if I had a bad weekend. I don't know, what, I don't know what's pissed me off recently. I'm, I'm trying to think what's annoyed me. Um... Oh, man, many things annoy me. I think, I think the classic one that can always go back on, which I've become quite passive-aggressive about, are people with the fucking bags on yeah. two wheels yeah. walking through. It's specifically in train stations, especially train stations in London. Yeah, because, 100%. Like, Where are you going that needs a suitcase in London? I don't know. Maybe they come from, <laughs> like, maybe they come from Gatwick. But I feel so embarrassed when I've got those wheelie bags that I just carried them. The, my issue is with the big groups of them all in one. Yeah, a little, or, yeah. The people that suddenly stop and don't realise that they've likely got someone behind them or someone coming from the right who's not necessarily going to see this bag that's hidden by everyone else walking by and you kick it over, they look upset and like, meh, and you're just like, for fuck's sake, like, you don't have enough spatial awareness when you're on your own. Yeah, you have yeah, no yeah, yeah, business yeah. holding this fucking bag, wheeling it around, fucking, for me to trip over. So now I purposely kick them. Yeah, no, straight up, I'll, I'll kick them, I'll kick their owners, like... I don't kick their owners. I'm, I, I'm going to level that. Like, <laughs> I just feel like I just start a fight and I just can't, I can't yeah. No, but it's like, you know, you, you pretend to trip up on them and accidentally hurt them. Or like... So, see, Bam's next level. I don't know. Right? Yeah, I, I shouldn't be around people mm. is the moral of the story. But the thing is... Most likely to Columbine. <laughs> like, you can... It's all right if you can hear them, yeah? Like, yeah. you can hear it and you're aware of it. But when you're on the tube and you've got your headphones in and whatever, you're not going to acknowledge that it's there. Uh, it's just a fucking... Like, if you are such a weak human being that you need a pair of wheels, yeah? Like, you know, cavemen needed wheels, yeah? 
like, are you a caveman? Are you that primitive in nature that you fucking didn't learn to carry? Or fuck? I don't even know. Maybe that's incorrect. Maybe we're meant to use technology. Maybe I'm on the outside and I'm the caveman getting no, annoyed man. at the technology. I don't know. Is suit bag on wheels technology? I'm sure, like, at one stage it probably was. Yeah, at some point, they, in, like, 1930, whatever, they were like, this is revolutionising just, the way that you pull about stuff. I feel like just everyone wants stuff to make it easier for themselves. They're all fucking lazy. Like, general public, like, in general, suck. But I think, like, these inventions are made for people that, like, might have a disability or might find it hard to carry or might yeah. have an actual reason, and then everyone else abuses it. So, yeah. like, classic example today was that really, really fat kid on one of those, like... Oh, fat, yeah. fat, fat man, let's say, because it sounds less, like, mean. But he was he on was one a of fat the... fat kid. Uh, it, yeah, okay. So, like, he was a fat kid. But, like, do you know those mono segue yeah, things? The, the, yeah. The things that Hover float, cro- Hoverboards or whatever they're hoverboards. called. So, genuinely... I hate everyone that has one of those and those as well. That's another great passionate hatred of mine. But this kid, he, you know, he, he needed to walk. And there was like, <laughs> you know, what was like even the thing was like you could see the two kids behind him who were skinny having a walk. And you're just like... Yeah, exactly. This is night and day, mate. This is night and day. <laughs> if that kid wasn't bought that monoboard, he, he was, I mean, he was fat before he got the monoboard. I know. But like, that's not going to help him lose weight. No, exactly. And what parent is buying that for him? That's a very irresponsible one, because like, at the end of the day, yeah, if, like, Timmy is, like, fucking sitting down in front of the TV all the time and fucking playing Xbox, and he doesn't go outside and play outside because the world's a lot more dangerous now, and they get a lift to school, they don't walk to school on their own, and they end up eating a lot of junk food because it's harder to, like, you know, when you're younger, you just fucking eat shit, you eat yeah, more you sweets Yeah, you haven't learnt restraint and stuff, it's understandable. Don't buy that kid a monoboard, or, like, what, like, <laughs> Don't buy him it. He doesn't need it. He need he needs buy him some gym shorts. Download a Pokemon what? Go, get him out on the streets. Pokemon man. Go. Or just buy him gym shorts and some running shoes. But buy him a new basketball. Try and go and play ball with him in the street. Just fucking get a cake and tie it to his head and dangle it in front of him. Oh, just get man. him moving. That's so that's so, <laughs> that's so Bugs Bunny. He needs a little Acme training belt. It would work. I I mean it might, but like I've yeah, if it did, I, 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 you know. No, but also, he was a kid, right? And there's this thing, and when you're a kid, yeah, being fat sort of weirdly means that you have muscle for some reason. Like, yeah. a lot of the bullies in school were just fat kids when you look back on yeah. it and stuff. There was the jolly fat kid that just got bullied, and then there was the fat, mo- moody-looking kid yeah. that everyone feared. Yeah, that, who, like, done, like, one extra sit-up or something. Starting to look a tiny bit like, oh, yeah, he's kind of big, but he's not really. Like, you always get those sort of people, and just... So maybe in his mind, he's a fucking G. Do you know what I mean? He's fucking... He's probably stolen that segue. His mum don't even know about it. True, I didn't even... But I mean, like... Oh, man, maybe that's, maybe that's what happened. Do you know what I mean? You never know. Oh, it's going to come back to bite him in the arse, though. <laughs> it's going to come back to him on the arse. I know we like talked about this earlier, but they should purposely weight-restrict those balls. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Purposely. Just like McDonald's food floors should be like if you step in it it's like no 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 run around the block a couple more times before you come in man like, yes because there's nothing more annoying than being caught up in again in a line type of situation and you're in mcdonald's and you look forward and you look who's holding up the line oh yeah fucking six foot wide motherfucking mum of three not even the kids ain't even there but no. she's got three happy meals like, do you know what I mean? Are we fat shaming right now? Because I'm fat shaming, motherfuckers. I, like, I am not fat shaming. I will fat shame all day long. I hate fat people. I'm, like, I don't hate fat people, but I hate the fact that you're in public places. Damn, I mean, like, okay. <laughs> so I'm completely tolerant in this respect. I'm more, I'm more wanting to think of ways that don't, don't get a kid who, who could lose weight and have a more healthy future by not being on the Segway. But if you're fat, you're fat. Yeah, if you're fat, you're fat, yeah. Except but I'm not, I'm not it. fat shaming it. Use Deliveroo, get it sent to your house, you don't have to walk. Bro, oh, they're making life too easy. Do you know what I mean? The whole thing's got a cheat code. Yeah, everything. That's why you got to walk every now and again. You can't just sit about. Yeah, exactly. Fucking, that's why Pokemon Go appealed to people. They're like, what? I, I walk? Like, do you know what I mean? It just got people out of their houses for once and stuff. Yeah, like, but the, the problem is, yeah, walking very, very slowly ain't really going to do too much. And you ain't walking quick on Pokemon Go because you're flicking balls everywhere or whatever shit. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't, I've, I've, I haven't had the, the pleasure of playing the game, unfortunately. No, but when you get to pro level, you, uh, you've got a brisk walk going and you're still... And that 
to be honest, that's when you feel like a fucking G. You're like at a, a mid stride, yeah, and you just flick a ball like casual, like 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 a pill across a pub on your way to Ibiza <laughs> to your mate Dave. You're just like here you go before the flight, yeah, cool, right? You know what I mean? You're just flicking them and you're fucking one hitting Pokemon, catching it and shit. You, you feel like a fucking G, like. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen someone walking quickly and playing Pokemon Go. Ah, oh, you ain't seen me play. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's crazy. But the thing about that game is it's dead to me now because, like, don't bring something out if it's not already been, like, perfected or whatever. Like, the biggest problem of playing the game was all of the memes and everything that was going on online and people doing this, but... If you're putting all the memes up and all the servers are down, then how's anyone actually playing games to make memes in the first place? Yeah, but do you reckon that these motherfuckers knew that it was going to, like, blow like it did? Nah. But and at like, the same time, yeah. Do you think yeah. they thought everyone was going to get the hack from the UK before it left America or... Like, yeah. Everyone around the world. I feel like they were forced into a position because everyone had found the hack and were getting it from different sources where they couldn't read... Uh, where They couldn't get the numbers from it. Yeah. Basically, if it was all on iTunes, they could get the number. But, like, the version a lot of British people got would have been, like, off a different server. Yeah, that's how I got it. So, but it's bad fucking... It's bad foresight, man. Like, it's Pokemon. People love that shit. People used to get robbed for fucking Pokemon cards at school, man. Well, I used to sell... I, I was a drug dealer point. with Pokemon cards. Exactly. Like, I used to get... The, I just bought, used to buy them to go and sell them to people. Exactly. I, I was not giving a fuck about Pokemon. I wasn't trying to play cards, but I was selling that shit. And exactly. I was, I was making dough. Yeah, man. I, I'd when, go and get a few extra cheeseburgers at lunch and hand them out to people <laughs> that I was boys with to be like, yeah, you know. I did nothing, man. Here's a, only cost a Gyarados. Yeah, exactly. I just sold all of my... When I was like year six, I was leaving and I just sold them to the year fives and year fours all on the... You know, they do that summer fake shit or whatever. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, I had yeah. a bunch of fake ones that I got like imported or whatever. You can't see it, but I'm doing air quotations. Imported, whatever. Yeah. Like, I was like, yeah, they're five pound each or whatever. I left there with like two, three hundred pound at the end of the fair, man. Oh, jeez. Yeah, like I was fucking... I was living life. Like oh, when you're man. year six and you get that sort of money without like doing fuck all for it. Summer fate, man. That's, <laughs> that that was the year I got like put on fucking internal exten- uh, internal uh, suspension. I had to How? sit next to him. Oh, mate. So I was. This must have been around GCSEs A level. So I'd either been sixteen or eighteen. I remember there was this girl that I'd been interested in at the time or whatever, and yeah. stuff had happened, and. Um, I think stuff. Stuff. <laughs> I kind of like logged it off, and like I went to like the end of like year party or whatever it was, and um, this guy had got with that girl, or no, this guy who had got that girl afterwards, I'd done something with her, and he like confronted me about it yeah, when yeah. I was at the summer fate. Um, so I'd like hooked up with her ever, and then like um, he thought that he was with her or something else like that. Yeah. So he'd like confronted me about it, and I remember I was just like, bruv, like. He was like, he was a bit of like one of the gimps, man. Like he wasn't like, (laughs) he wasn't no one like tough. He was like just this like dickhead. He was about 6'4 or something like that. Four something of himself. And he was like, yeah, big for nothing. I remember I was just like, I just go away, get out of my face. I was eating a cake at the time. I remember every time I was trying, I just like, I was being like mad childish. I'd take the cake out of my mouth, like just throw it at him while I was like, (laughs) it's like school shit. We were walking like down and he kept just like coming for me. And I was just like, look, just fucking walk away. And he like, I was like, no, no. So I took his glasses off his face and I dashed him to the side. Oh, and he like, why are you doing that for, uh, man? He like swung for me or whatever. I caught one arm, put it under my armpit. Like he <laughs> swung for me with the other arm. I caught that arm, put it under my armpit. Used my arms like that, fucking nutted him. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> his like nose broke or whatever. And I had like blood all on like my forehead. I was like, fuck, I need to get out of school. Fuck this. I'm like yeah. trying to wipe this blood off my forehead and walk in, like dashed it to the side. I get to one of like the year eights or nines that are standing there and they got a can of tango and I'm like, like, just pour some in my hand right now, pour some in my hand. You've got to pour it in my hand because like, you've got some blood in your head. And I'm just like wiping it off with Tango. I left the school with like my mate, Terry Gillum. He was like, oh, what the fuck happened? And I was just like, he just wouldn't leave it, bro. He just wouldn't leave it. He pushed it until it went too far. Um, let's go. And we're like walking down the road. It was actually me and Chris Colbert, my mate who went mental. We'll get on to him in a bit. Um, but like we were walking down the road 
And um, I remember I was walking down the road and we were like talking about it, slightly gassed about it, because yeah. you know how it is just after you have like an adrenaline rush. Oh, bro, a after a fight and everyone's like, yo, what happened? And you're yeah. like, yeah, I fucking gave him a hadouken <laughs> and shit. Like. You just feel like you're the Don for at least like two hours after. Just feel, like, it's amplified by how many friends you have around you at the yeah, time. Yeah, 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 100%. You know, if, if there's like a bear of you, oh, it lasts for hours. But like at this particular time, we're gassing, talking about it, and the assistant headmaster pulls up and he's like, Robert, how was your day? And he's like, yeah, not bad. He's like, Bagnall, how was your day? And I was like, yeah, 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 good, man. Just fucking leaving early. Can't be bothered to stay for the summer fate. And he's like, you also didn't like what Jason Barber had to say, did oh you? Oh, my God. Get in the car. So we get in the car. <laughs> he drives me up the road, and he's like trying to say that, oh, like, you smacked this guy twice, you slapped him, blah, blah. And I'm like, look at my knuckles. They look like a... Yeah, it always one. like Surely gets like did. blown out of proportion. Like they're like, you just backed up a steamroller on him. Like, man, it was like, it was like on some different level. It's like <laughs> when you're kids, you just make shit up. And yeah. he really just wanted me to be in like the most amount of trouble ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, I fucking got to the office and I was like, look, if you're going to expel me, just fucking expel me. I can't be asked and walk out. I'm still gassed. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll just walk out right now. It doesn't even matter. And um, the teacher's like, no, no, don't be stupid. And I ended up on like <laughs> internal suspension. I remember the teacher at the time was a G because uh, he would like let me still go for fags. Yeah. He'd let me like leave and he was, he was like, oh, like, oh, like, um, Oh, back then, if you uh, need to walk down the road and just take a stretch up for five minutes, it's fine. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go for a fag story. He's like, no, 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 no. If you agree that you're just going to go for a walk up the road, then you can do what you want. And I was like, yeah, we'll have a ciggy. He's like, look, Pagan, I can't hear that. <laughs> I, was, I was a little kid at school, you know what I mean? I was like, I was, I was proper like, I was, I was a little shit. Um, but I remember the, the worst fight story that I've had, it wasn't even a fight, but it's the most hilarious thing. I remember like me and this kid didn't like each other and we arranged a fight. Oh, bro, arranging fights is the funniest shit right. ever. So I, we arranged a fight. It was going to happen at this rugby ground, Medway rugby ground, around the corner. I turned up. He was like half hour late or whatever, like, we, like 11 a.m., you know, blah, blah, blah. I remember he turned up and we was like, all right, mate. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn, like, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> talking. And then, like, we went to walk to a more, like, secluded area to have a fight. But it was, like, weird because there was, like, a conversation beforehand. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah, walked yeah. there together. It wasn't just, like, as soon as they turned up, it was on. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was, yeah, like, yeah. some different... Because the animosity had, like, gone. Yeah, 100%. Like, we arranged it on Thursday. It's now, like, Saturday morning. It's Sunday morning. <laughs> and, like, he was, like... Oh, you know, like, my mum and dad have turned up. They're just in the car down there. They got a medical what? kit. <laughs> he turned up with his mum and dad. And they'd had a medical kit in the car in case oh anyone got hurt. Oh, my God. <laughs> and what? then, like, I was like, oh, man, like, I don't really want to, like, fight with your parents there. Man. This, 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 feels like, this feels like such a stupid situation to be in. And, like, we agreed rules that it was going to be, like, the first of five downs. And it became more like fucking, like, some wrestling thing. <laughs> and just, like, I, I think I got five downs. And we were just like, she shook hands. We're like, oh, okay, cool. See you at school on Monday. But it was just like, what? there was no one there. I've been like, I've never been in a range fight because I, I'm, I, I arrange shit. I'll knock you out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't arrange that. I'm angry now. And if it doesn't happen now, it's, it's done. Like, you know what I mean? But like, fucking, I've been at some arranged fights. Yeah, I, li I like it though, because in school it is like Fight Club. It'd be like, you'd go to that one area that everyone, you know, probably like the area everyone smoked weed yeah. in or some shit like that, which was near enough or whatever, and like you'd get there, yeah? And it would be that. It'd be sort of like, all right, then, ain't you going to fight, yeah? And they'd be like, I'm going to, I'm going to, isn't it? Like, <laughs> let him swing first, let him swing first, yeah? And then what happens is you just, everyone starts fucking just like, it gets real Rome up in there. People mm. being like, just hit him. Fucking hit him. Well, I don't know why Kill we had him. one Manchester guy in my school in London, but we did. And just fucking, wrapped her in the crowd. Yeah, he was just there like, Kill him. <laughs> thumb down and shit. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and like, it just builds up. I remember like, there was a period of time where they were doing that. Like, and this, there's this guy in the year below me also called Joel. Yeah. And he was tall and I was tall and we both had a reputation. Like, I didn't like fighting people, but I hurt people. Yeah, like, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, I wouldn't yeah, yeah. fight but I'd end up some guy's busted nose or some shit yeah, or like yeah, whatever yeah. and then you're in trouble and it's like yeah, I didn't do yeah, anything yeah. whatever but um, they were just being like yeah you guys should fight because you're both big and you're both called Joel <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean you're digging at concepts do you know what I mean like, well, I actually, <laughs> you're both big and your name is Joel fight yeah, like, <laughs> yeah I'm true say like, I should be fighting for who's the most jolliest tall guy <laughs> in the world right now bro I'm like no way should I be getting taught down like this <laughs> do you know, and for a second you are like that is kind of true you know 
I don't really like the fact you're called Joe and you're also tall. Like, <laughs> but like, then you realise, you're like, this is the fucking most stupidest thing ever. Oh, man. Like, you, you've got beef with someone because their name is Joel and they are tall. We didn't even have beef. Someone just came along and suggested we might have beef because of it. And you created a sly <laughs> bit of beef. Like, you know what I mean? Just even like the insidious thought that it might be worth the beef created a bit of beef. I'm glad I didn't fight that guy anyway because I remember one time, because we were cool anyway. I remember we were chilling at our boy Younger Clue's house. He just handed me this fucking knife, like, handle over first, yeah, and he's like, oh, yo, hold this, yeah, and I wasn't thinking, I was like, yo, what's this? And then he took it back, and he's like, thanks for putting your prints on it. Yo, this guy sounds fucking <laughs> scary. <laughs> I, like, put out a thread today to try and get a few people to give us ideas of stuff that was either annoying them yeah. or things that are going wrong with their lives that I, either they want our advice on yeah, or they want to see how we feel about these specific <laughs> items. So... Uh, the first person who wrote into us had basically said, people who walk three or more people wide at a slower than casual pace on a sidewalk or grocery store. Seriously, what is with this fucking shit? I have places to be and you're damn right, I will get road rage in a grocery store because you and your family have decided you need the whole fucking aisle to decide what Doritos grandma would like best at the beach. Now this is something that personally annoys me. I, I, like, on the, like on the pavement or walking along, do you know like when you're walking, and like there's, there's suddenly just a, a, a solid row of people who are all together yeah, yeah, and yeah. they are walking slowly and you manage to like duck into the road or wherever else to overtake them and suddenly there's a whole other line of people and you're just like, yeah, did, did you not learn about single file in school? Yeah. Like, can you not just walk like either quicker or without taking up the entire pavement? It's a, it's a tough one though because you, you don't ever want to be the guy at the back. You know? How, how do you mean? Like, what happens is you've got three people, yeah. two end up leading, and that last most considerate person is like, oh, yeah, I'll just go behind because I don't want to take up the whole road. And then they're just the social outcast. Yeah, but someone should just be like, you know what, I'm going to drop back with old social outcast. I'm going to have a little <laughs> chat with him, and together we'll have a nicer time. Like, I feel like that guy is the unmoved mover, you know, like... There's got to be one person that sets off a chain of events. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. There's like, there's too many people in the world. So like one person has to say, you know what, I'm not going to have children. And then hopefully other people will at the same time follow them in the same suit. That is exactly that guy on the pavement. But He's I feel the guy like, not having a kid. The, but, He's smart. He's looking after people. If those people don't want to be an outcast with him, then fuck those guys, man. I feel the same. I feel the same. I, but it annoys me more when it's one person and they take up three people's space. Firstly, that would be. I mean, you're coming back to the fat <laughs> shaving. <laughs> hey, hey, that's what it is. But I like, <laughs> look, mate. Yeah, I don't know what your name is. I'm just gonna say Sunny Jim, right? Sunny Jim. I'm gonna say to you, firstly, if you're gonna get road rage on the pavement, yeah, you're not yeah. In, in the right situation, yeah. Like fucking get in the car. You won't have to worry about that. You have a different set. No, of but he's problems. got pavement rage. Yeah, but he, I get pavement rage too. I understand this guy. Ah, if he was on a mobility scooter, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt and you can have your road rage and stuff. But, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, he, he sounds really wrapped up kind of tight. No, like, I, I, I fully get him. Like, just when you're, like, trying to get somewhere. I, I'm a quick walker. Yeah, but do you say excuse me? Yeah, sometimes, man. And if they don't move, then you have a right to be pissed, right? I just try to follow the maze of people. I try to duck and dive. It's, it's, it's worse in malls and, like, big shopping centres. It's, like, worse. All right, do you want to know... Or, like, train <laughs> stations where people just randomly stop. It, like, okay, so, like, when you're in the train station and someone walks directly at you and they step, don't step left or right, they just stop. Yeah, all right, you, do you know where this is pisses me the fuck off? I know that it's probably tourists or whatever, yeah? But those people that do the two following things at train stations... Brexit. <laughs> you get your oyster card out when you get to the oyster card gate, yeah, and yeah. you're fucking faffing about with it, and you're like, yeah. that pissing me off. Same thing. If you're in a fast food restaurant, make your order before you get to the till. It's a simple situation. And also, have your money out when you get to the till. That yeah. guy who's uh, suddenly fumbling through his change, and he's just like, oh, oh. just have a card. Have a card. Have the tappy tap. Yeah. yeah, but like before those things were even existed, people were just being like mad slow, and you're just like, <laughs> just, I, I like just. Bang, 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 get on my way. I'm not trying to, like, fucking stand about for yeah. someone to fumble through their 20p's to pay for, like, a Big Mac. And you're just like, bruh, like, I I'll take five seconds to do my order. Or, right, oh, this is another one. There's so much. Okay, like, when you're at the, sh when you're at the supermarket and yeah. you go to get in the queue and you know there's that, there's that dance of, like, when well, you go to get in the queue. The one that doesn't know if he's in self-service no. or... 
the, the person, like two people will both be walking towards to get in the queue at the same time. And that one guy might walk a little bit quicker or they'll purposely like just hot, like cut you up and get ahead. Yeah. And they got a full basket and you're holding a, a, a bottle of Lucasade and a, a sandwich. Yeah, I, oh, I tell you what, right? Just quickly going back to that. In this Odeon situation I was talking about earlier, yeah. the thing that was the icing on the cake of the woman in the Odeon not fucking giving me, like letting me through, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like for a 15 movie is that before I got to the till, there was these two kids in line. I was like, ah, oh, they're probably gonna go see Fine and Dory or whatever. But then no, suddenly the pe another parent turns up, yeah, who knew these kids and his son knew these kids. And he slides in in front of me slyly. And I'm like, maybe they're his kids. This is all right, yeah. But, but after fucking, yeah, 10 minutes of going back and forth with this woman and whatever, yeah, he then turns around to me and goes, oh yeah, sorry for cutting in line. Why are you saying this now? Why are you saying this what? now? Like, but, 10 minutes on, you're only saying it because you feel like you're wasting my time and you're not sorry because you've already cut in line. I'd have been silently gritting my teeth, I was staring so at the <laughs> back of the guy's head, thinking of all kind of mad shit. Just yeah, exactly. Like, like, and then I get to there and she goes, do you have ID? No. And I'm like, it's a 15. No, you can't get into the movie. So, you know, that's why it was so fucking annoying. But this guy, the only other thing that annoys me more than people walking three in a row is like you're saying, if you get into a tube situation and you get down there and you're going down the stairs, those people that either stop on the staircase for some unapparent reason, right? Yeah. Or they get to the very bottom and then they need to fucking look at both sides of the map to realize where they're going and shit. It's like, Use TFL, use a route planner, know where you're going, but like, you know, that's just a general thing in life. Know where, yeah. the, where, know where you were going. Like, you know, like, just take that away with you. A hundred percent. I think that, I think once again, that's a very Brexit situation for you. <laughs> I feel like you're having to go at people that might not understand the, the inner modicums of traveling around in uh, London, but I agree with you, they, they annoy me. Like anyone slowing me down on my journey, they, they annoy me. Yeah. So um, talking about people who get in the way of a journey that might annoy you. I guess um, I do. And uh, you know what, like I, I'm, I'm arguing against it just because I feel like we needed a bit of balance in that situation. And also like, I, you know, I just had this vision of this guy with a fucking trolley getting road rage, which is quite hilarious. But <laughs> like, Yeah, but uh, then you can just shove them. Exactly. Don't bump the car the situation. But here's my advice, right? If you're in a situation like this and you don't want to say excuse me, right, you, you walk, behind them at a faster pace, yeah? Stay at your pace. As <laughs> no, that's so aggressive. Wait, as you're walking, yeah? Slowly increase the sounds of your steps as you approach, right? Mm. So you, they know that you're behind them. And then if they don't move, then fucking passively, aggressively push them to the floor and kick them. Okay, I mean, again, it's a very aggressive solution to a, a problem that might not need to be aggressive. But knowing you, I kind of accept that. Th this one might annoy you, but I don't think you walk up escalators enough. Uh, people who stand on the left on the escalator. I do actually fucking walk up escalators all the time, <laughs> bro. That's my leg day. That, I agree. I walk up every escalator. Exactly. People who stand on the left. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is fucking retarded. And then, you know, same thing. I'll just be like very much like, excuse me. <laughs> you know, you got to say it like fucking as if they're the dumbest person ever. Like, excuse me. Yeah, but I just feel like I'm just going to get into a confrontation with someone if I do something like that. No, man, I said, I said, excuse me. That's the most politest thing you can say in that situation. Yeah, but saying it like, excuse me. Doesn't it's matter. Like, I said, I said it. I said the polite I words. I don't know if that's a buy for getting away with saying it in an aggressive way. Oh, man, that's how I get through life. Oh, man, I feel like so I was walking up the stairs the other day. I, I always wear quite big trainers. The guy was walking quicker behind me. Yeah. Even though I'm walking up the escalator and it's a very single path. Yeah. And he stood on the back of my trainer and it fell off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I turned yeah, yeah, around yeah. and I looked at him like I was going to kill him and yeah. I just carried on walking. I would have been like, this is Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I felt more like the retard holding up the shield because I felt too embarrassed to fucking start a fight <laughs> in front of everyone else. Just like limping. And, like, I was just like, you're you fucking serious. Like, what the fuck are you doing, mate? And then I just carried on walking. I like, yeah. I, I'm not trying to start, start fight with, fights with the public. It's not something that's in my, um, it's, it's not something that I'm interested in at the moment. So uh, this guy has said, waiters, who, when you ask for water, come back with the most expensive bottle of volcanic pure filtered bullshit and then get moderately in a huff when you say tap water. Who does that? That's never happened to me. I always say tap water. Yeah, I always state that it's tap water. And then on top of that, like, I don't go to restaurants fancy enough that they want to try and ship that off to me. Um, I've been to restaurants where they do it, but I always stress tap water. So I've been to places that say they don't do tap water. I'm just like, you're lying. Yeah. 100% you got a tap. Yo, I've been to places before where they do tap water for free, but they charge you for the glass. That's got to be like against human rights or something. Like, what are they charging you for? Just for cleaning the glass? Yeah. How much are they charging? I don't know. It's like 50p or something. I mean, I mean, 
It don't, no, it doesn't take that no, amount of time. it's not fair, is it? It's no, not it's fair. not fair. That's bullshit. Yeah. Okay, so I've got more of a problem with that. That's, that's the worst thing you can do. That what? is fucking like... Who use that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? That is literally like, if someone was dying or whatever, it'd be like, yeah, but 50p for the cut, mate. Sorry. Um, this guy has said, when you go for a piss, but some foreskin is covering your japs eye and it just sprays everywhere. Get a circumcision. <laughs> Get a circumcision. Are you I can't help you. I'm not, but I know how to use my penis. So. Yeah, I feel like this guy, although I have had it like sometimes after certain events. Where, Sex peeing. There's that yeah, whole yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. Where like it goes in a different direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never had my foreskin covering part of my japs eye, no. but I have had pisses that go astray. I don't know what's wrong with this guy's foreskin. Like maybe he has a really <laughs> long foreskin. Maybe the like, problem is more with this guy's exactly. foreskin. Exactly, that's just like poor genetics, man. Yeah. Like, okay. This one pisses me off. People who don't stand for elders or pregnant people on public transport. People who don't stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. me, man. You don't stand. No, oh, like, I, do you I, know I would look at you with disgust. Do you I'm know not, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Tell me about just it. Just nah. Nah. Like because I, I've assessed it. Yeah. Old men, I'm sorry, but you're standing, mate. Why? Because you're a man, firstly. Yeah, be a man about it. I know I'm sitting there like a little bitch, yeah, but I got the seat first, yeah? So if you're a man, come take it off me. But fucking, like... <laughs> so you've got such a warm mood to everything. <laughs> like, this is mine. Fight me if you want. Like an old guy. Is this 92 p- is this 92 yeah, like year if, old paint maker? If I saw him, I would definitely be You were standing, mate. Yeah, but like, then you're like, you've already made him go and pick up a dustpan and brush. Yeah, but it's life. Like, it's part of his job, do you know what I mean? And um, It's not. He shouldn't have been there. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get out for pregnant women. I'll do that. Yeah, but not old people. No, I'll get out for an old woman. But not an old man. I think that's weird. Like, pr- people are probably going to say that I'm fat shaming and that I'm a sexist. But I like things old fashioned. So, But is that old fashioned to not stand up for an old man? Yeah, man. You gotta respect your elders, son. Look, if I'm an old man, I don't want to be treated like some fucking bitch, yeah? So I'm good standing, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but like, what if he wants that seat and he, he don't mind? Just because, like, I agree that we shouldn't <laughs> be made, like, some people don't want to be highlighted for the fact that they're old or the fact that yeah, they're yeah, running yeah. to sit down. So sometimes, them man will probably want to go, I won't just stand up and be like, here's your seat. I was like, oh, yeah, do you need a seat? And if they're like, nah, they're like, nah, but I will ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will ask. I'm not just going to be like, and I will genuinely look at people with disgust if they don't do it. See, that's or what I'll I don't like get. Or are you going to let the person sit down? Yeah, because, because that's the thing though. Like, the, you get these dirty looks, yeah, from people that are either standing going, that could have been my seat, that could have been my seat, but now I'm pissed at you. Or you get people that go, I wasn't willing to move. Did you just go like 1930s, like, yeah. m- minstrel voice? Yeah, I did. That could have been my seat, my son. <laughs> <Like, laughs> oh my God. Uh, that's probably from Killer Croc, man. They, they fucking minstreled out Killer Croc. Like, they ask him at the end of the movie, like, you know, because they, they do the mission. I'm not like, you know, obviously they get the mission done or the movie. Yeah, or I not, mean, or whatever. That's, that's kind of the. Do you know what I mean? So, that's the film. And they get told, oh, is there any sort of like you know, things you'd like us to accommodate yourselves with because they're prisoners, yeah? yeah? You know, oh yeah, espresso maker, whatever, do all these, you know, normal things. Oh, I want to see my kid, whatever. Killer Croc, who's been speaking like a minstrel himself for the entire movie, just goes to him, BT. That's it. That's all he said. He doesn't even say, I want BT, just BT, right? Oh my God. Not even like Sky Television or a di- satellite or something like with multiple channels. This guy, BT, because that's all black people want apparently, yeah? BT. And then oh even in the God. outro sequence, like they show what everyone's up to now and, you know, Harley's got her espresso maker and, you know, so and so seeing their kid, all of that cool shit, whatever, yeah. yeah? And you've just got Killer Croc watching some big booty bitches on the fucking screen in a, like, he's still in a sewered out fucking enclosure. They haven't improved his enclosure. They've just put a TV in like a fucking crocodile enclosure, right? Do they have like, electricity in this enclosure? Yeah, they've, they've provided it for this one channel. It's not that much to wire. And they fucking, like, do you know what I mean? And not only is he just watching these big booty bitches, but he's there doing this sort of weird, like, gyrating hand move. And it's just so fucking, like, over the line. Man, this like, it sounds like how Transformers did the Chinese. Yeah, but the, the thing is, that guy is the guy that voiced... He's the original guy, Godzilla. That guy, he is that guy. Yeah, but, like... 
So oh. it can't be racist. Yeah, but you know I, mean? I feel like a bunch of robots from outer space aren't gonna have these like outrageously like. What about the two little accents? smart cars that were like fucking they were outrageous black? Too. Like, they were like, outrageous uh, that was too. crazy. Yeah, like, man. I'm putting all of that into it. <laughs> I feel like they should have a unified accent. Yeah. I don't feel like they should all represent should different all be, areas of the world. Like Stephen Hawking yeah. and shit. I would take that way more on board <laughs> than someone being like, oh, like it's just like, nah, man, that's not his sound. And then the two like black cars just being these like hood from the Bronx, like, hey, yeah. yo, what you saying, man? Yeah, like the it's most. It's just like, <laughs> that's not, come on, man. Yeah. Michael Bay, you're a terrible racist. Michael Bay, <laughs> you're an awful, awful, awful racist, and your films are generally shit. Um, when people say words like Monday, it's Monday itis and it squeeze me. <laughs> I haven't heard Monday itis. I don't... I've never heard of Monday itis. What? This guy is from New Zealand. Yeah. Um, but I've never heard anyone say I've got Monday itis. I've heard it squeeze me. Here. I've heard it squeeze me. That's fine I've... if you're like a. Isn't Cute, that, adorable fucking Disney character. Yeah, but isn't that like 94 or something? I haven't heard someone say it squeeze me in a long time. Yeah, it's true. It's I feel true. like that's more uh, New Zealand being in the past. But what, <laughs> what does piss me off is probably more like people saying totes and people saying amazeballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that I was shit. chatting to this girl. She, she used the term amazeballs in one message to me and I did not respond. How she, can you... See this just... I thought she was cool. We were having a really nice back and forth conversation. Yeah. And then she uttered the words... Amaze balls, and I, I, I could not message back. No, I, I wouldn't message I, I was, back I, either. I, based on that, I know that we won't. Uh, it wasn't even like ironic. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You can you can like bust it out as a joke, totes yeah. or amaze balls. But like people who use it seriously, or people who you seriously use the word like, oh, it's Trez hot out here, mate. Yeah. Like nah, like we're, yeah, we're yeah, in yeah. a different playing field. I don't I don't think you'll understand me. I don't think I'm ever gonna understand you. Yeah, exactly. And like you know, in, even on the flip side of that shit, like lit. And stuff is just like oh, it's British getting people fucking, lit. Yeah, mad? like it's getting insane, man, with all of that sort of stuff. Like You know what? <sighs> this party is lit. Yeah, it's like, well yeah, the lights are on. It is a great atmosphere. It's Do you know what I mean? I mean to a certain degree, because of like UK slang largely coming from like Patois and Yardies coming over in the seventies, there's a lot you can understand. And like if you like hang out with certain people or you live in certain areas, you get used to speaking into a very certain way. That's why when you go out of London, which is a much more like cultural place and they haven't had influence from Yardies and don't have the influence of language, people don't understand and like say, oh, you're just copying other people's language. Yeah, they don't yeah, understand yeah. the originating that it is just such a multicultural hubbub. Hubbub. Nice yeah, word. see, bringing uh, it back, bro. Bringing hubbub back. <laughs> but like, well, totes and amazeballs are just general abbreviations. People who use the word YOLO, people who use the word bay. I like YOLO, though. I like, did you know this is the problem, though? You start to use these things ironically to the point where they just become normal. Oh, of course. Like, and that's, you know, I say YOLO all the time. I'm like, Do you use bay? No, only like just to fucking wind up whoever, you know, like. Yeah. Or like, I ironically, like, I'm like, you know, like fucking Pizza Hut is bay. Yeah. Like, I think someone called me Ainsley Harriet the other day, and I was like, oh, I'm Bainsley Harriet to you. Like, <laughs> that's fu- like, if it's a that pub, just gives me a bit. picture of fucking Ainsley Harriet with Bain's mask covering his fucking smile. Bro, if someone can make us that Photoshop and send it yeah, in, please I'll do. I'm more than happy to see that. Um, you were but, merely but yeah, I, I think accustomed people- to the kitchen. I was born in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, had it. Steady cool. <laughs> I hadn't seen a blender since I was a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next we've got um, when you get shot in the face so perfectly that the bullet is lodged in your nostril at an angle where you literally don't lose a single drop of blood but you call your boss to get some rest slash work off anyways and he doesn't believe you because there's nothing you can prove without x-rays is the worst. Um, next question. Next question. Uh, stop playing Call of Duty. Pokemon Go. Ah, oh, we covered this, but Pokemon Go in general, like I said, I'd like you know, the biggest thing that annoyed me is just generally like fucking servers don't work, nothing fucking works, and then you're trying to play it, and as a grown man, you're trying to play it, and this game fucking rewards the unemployed in their masses, because they're fucking rolling about like, oh yeah, well you were at work being like, whatever, I fucking caught a Gyarados, and I got this, and da 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 and it's like, yeah, that's fucking great. When I get out of work, my server don't even work, you know, so in general, fuck that game. If you like that game, I don't like you. Yeah, I mean, like, I've, I personally, I'm a 28 year old man. I think the game's pretty lame. I love Pokemon. I, I wouldn't go as far as say I don't like anyone that plays it. But again, if I'm walking around and getting my way, 
or you know you, you're uploading pictures of it like you upload baby pictures then generally I do not fuck with it yeah um, I'm just mad because you know they got better shit than me man okay this one is probably one that we can both have some sort of input on so shit adverts shit adverts the best thing about being a fucking adult in the fucking 2016 is that I don't have to deal with shit adverts no more. Yeah. You know, like I'm so dumb. I was so dumb with adverts as a kid. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like they're the worst representation I think of like selling, like because it's just fucking. Oh god, it's been so, been so long since I've watched an advert. That I've erased it from my mind, but just there's certain there's a couple of adverts from going to like fucking ad conferences and stuff like that. that I've seen. I thought. You know what, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. But in general, you watch TV and you see adverts and you're just like, who is this meant to engage with? Who's watching this yep. and seeing it as something that's like, a, like an honest portrayal? It's just all bollocks, you know? I, I, like, I, I think we knew that sex was, made to, was used to sell stuff or making people look really rich and swanky was used to sell stuff in the 90s, a very early technique. Yeah. And back in like the Wall Street 80s aspirational time when money was first blowing, I feel like it had a place where... There was aspiration, but as people grow and maybe we're in an advantageous position where we fully understand media and how it works, but when you look at them, you're just like, who are these meant for? But then you also question the fact that there's 80% of people in the planet who watch stuff as a passive audience yeah, who yeah, do yeah. not understand what they're watching and do not understand what they're fucking talking about or what they're taking in, which is exactly why stuff like Brexit happens. But like these kind of adverts, you watch them and you're just like... Who the fuck is this? That's what, like, you know, like, my mum the other day was, like, she was on at me because she's back at the house currently and she's bought her TV so she can watch whatever. And she's like, oh, I can't get the TV to work and I want to watch TV. And I'm like, mum, why the fuck do you want to watch TV? You have a laptop. Like, I was like, look, we're going to get you a Netflix account. We're going to get you onto the iPlayers. Like, you don't, you can watch it all live through your computer anyway. Oh, yeah. Like, so I don't understand this need to, to do it. But some people do like that sort of just, like, you know, you got to remember there's a lot of people that just like having it on in the background and stuff. I mean, we've like, got it on in the background at the moment. Some yeah. weird, weird, it looks like Nazi stuff. Yeah, this on. is definitely some Nazi shit right here. But like, uh, since we've got the TV put in in this place, I have felt like just having it on sometimes, especially when me and Sam like sit about and we'll just fucking be on our phones or yeah. we're chatting shit or we're eating. The, the TV is like not ne like really significant. But you're right in the sense of if I want to watch a series, if I want to watch a show, I'll go to Amazon Prime or I'll go to And they've got adverts all over the internet anyway. Oh, they do, and I avoid them like the plague. Yeah. Because even those I don't understand. Who, like, okay, one thing that's always, like, confused me, like, from a younger age, I don't watch as much porn anymore, but, like, say you're on a porn site. Yep. Who's clicking on the ads for get sex easy now in your area? Yeah, it's like... Who wants a bigger dick? Click here. And who's, who's clicking those and going through them? Who are those adverts for? Yeah, like the thing is, yeah, like, it's a scary prospect on what happens to the people that click them. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I because no if you're idea. dumb enough to fucking click that shit, what's going to happen when you're dumb enough to leave your house tomorrow? Like... Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, I feel like these kind of people probably should be part of the Darwin Awards. Yeah, it is. It's Darwinian. They, 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 they should go out early. Yeah, these, yeah, yeah, These people do not have the general capacity for what it takes to be alive. Yeah, Joe Rogan laid it down. He's like, don't you think if there's big dick pills, you'd be seeing people with big dicks everywhere you go? Just like, because yeah. those guys, because they like started with small dicks or something, and suddenly they've got an anaconda. They'd be like the Randy Marsh in right, that they'd episode. They'd be chucking it about. Wheel, they'd wheel be, it and they'd shit. They'd be using it at all times to be like, <laughs> oh, so did I tell you? And surely some of the guys with like bigger dicks would use the big dick pills still because they'd be like, yeah, I want to really, really yeah, big Yeah, exactly. Dick. And these guys... They'd all die, like you'd hear about it. Yeah, they 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 die. Then that's Yo, the thing. You, you, you've you'd got see Google review now. You can you can like search that product before you've even searched it to see if it works. And even all like this fat burning products or weight slimming products, you search any of them. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, these don't work. Do you know what works? Fucking go for a walk. Go for a run. <laughs> do some exactly. exercise. Exactly. Pokemon Go is tried and tested now, kids. Do it. F fucking, I tell you some adverts that like uh, m more so than adverts. I remember formulas to adverts. Yeah, uh, like. The one, the one I hate the most is, right, so we're going to, this is a butter, but we're going to talk about it as if it's England, and we're going to do it in oh, spoken God. word poetry, oh, and we're going to have a fucking piano that comes in like, do 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 Those this adverts. was born on a fresh soil. Yeah, that where shit. Where workers came together that to shit. fight this. 
is I can't believe it's not part. Yeah, like that stuff is so like that for and the thing is when something works in advertising, they fucking ham the shit out of it. So you're then yeah. there for a year watching like twenty different takes on this same fucking shitty pose. It's like yeah. Wake up, go to bed, did it. Oh, bruv, the army ones are kind of bad as well, where it's like, wake up, go to sleep, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did join the army. Like, they almost hit you so quick and fast. You're like, what, 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 join the army? Oh, okay. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Adverts in America are the funniest thing. Yeah, and uh, bruv. Have they- you seen uh, a cosmetic advert for any sort of pills or anything? Or medicine? Yeah, the fucking America? shit at the end. No, like, it's not even at the end. They'll go like this, they'll go, take Viagra. For a harder time, for a better time, and hard fun. Like, you know, they're not going to say hard fun, but like, and then suddenly you just go, if you did this, you may have the risk of dying, you may have the risk of getting cancer, you yeah, may have the risk yeah, of doing yeah. all this. And, and it's like literally one minute of like, uh, like horse jockey commentator <laughs> or like wedding, ra- wedding DJ announcements, just, just saying all the horrible things that can happen to you. Uh, and, and like, it's every advert break. <clears throat> It's Which like is like every is. 10 minutes in America. The That's still crazy shit. The good adverts are the ones that stick with you. So like now, even now, I remember it was a stupid advert. It was probably for fucking window glazing or something. But it was like, bog off. You buy one, you get one free. <laughs> you buy one, you get one free. And that stayed with me my entire life. Yeah, yeah, Or yeah. like the two hedgehogs crossing the road. Where yeah, like, exactly. Da, 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 da. King of the road. Yeah. Like that advert. Like I always joke about it now, you know. Like, yeah, that... that and they had a series, and now they were onto a good thing. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, they did it right. But and adverts now, would you? My favourite other one, yeah, is fucking just, like, the best hits of whatever, you know? Where it's like, we're bringing you the best love songs from 1989 mm. to whenever, yeah? And then, it, you know, it comes in like, I'm not enough. And it goes through them, and it's got the track list and, and the shit, And every single one of them, uh, every one now and again is yellow. Yeah, because that that's the one that's go. playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the best thing about that shit, yeah, is imagine in fucking like 50 years time when it's like bringing you the best trap music from 2010 to 2020 and shit. And it would just be like young thug and shit. Got you know <laughs> I mean? the flick of the wrist. Got yeah. the flick of the wrist. <laughs> and it's just like, and like, other such bangers as Panda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be amazing. It would be so great when it gets to that point in time. Like, um, you know what I mean? Like, hopefully those infographic commercials don't exist and they're just all just given to you via Spotify or <laughs> Futurefy or whatever the fuck, Future Wi-Fi. Okay, um, next we've got um, Christians that say you're going to hell like God's told them personally, uh, yeah, tell him he's going to hell motherfucker you think I do not know that okay I mean this, so this guy's kind of interesting so by the end he's kind of saying that he's he accepted believes Christianity in, yeah he's accepted Christianity because yeah. he's going to hell yeah unless he's just got some like I obviously know God but there is still a heaven and a hell <laughs> but like this I, I don't know I feel like he, this guy you've got something conflicted. against Christians here firstly I don't have necessarily <laughs> anything against Christians. No, but I'm saying this guy does. I know, I I was just gonna put in my own two cents on the subject. Is that I hate anyone that lets their um, choice of religion or choice of dietary habits or choice of lifestyle make them preach to other people. I'm one of those people that any colour, any sexuality, any age, any whoever you are, any like music choice, whatever, you like yeah. it shouldn't separate me and you as a human being because if we talk and we get along and you get me and I get you then you're completely cool in my books yeah, I don't exactly. care where you're from I don't care what you believe in but if you meet me and you tell me ah oh, you know what mate you should do this or you should do that yeah. or you should yeah, change yeah, yeah. yourself then what, what, what's the point of us talking in the first place because you don't need to change me and I don't need to change you if we don't get on on those factors alone then there's no point of us knowing each yeah, other yeah if you can't look past that in general like, mm. do you know what I mean? But here's the funny thing about it, and like, you know, and, and religion in a whole, right? They, you know, people complain and they complain about religion being forced on them and the biggest thing about being in this country, right? Is people blame, I don't want the Muslims coming over here because they're going to fucking force everyone to become a Muslim and da 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 Who's the one person that's never knocked on your door for a sign-up? Muslims. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Like, so like, I've had Jehovah's Witnesses and yeah. fucking... Christians outside every train station like 
Yeah, exactly. Like I had a Christian guy knock on my door from the local church and he tried to use the fact, even though I didn't tell him I smoked weed or whatever, he just assumed. And it was so funny because he just was like, yeah, and that's the fit. And he tried to imply that I was smoking weed. And I was like, hold up, son. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, what leg do you have to, you've just accused me of like smoking a drug. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? And you're trying to use this now to say that I'm a druggie and I need to now get on with your religion and do, 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 do. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and I just had to stop him in his tracks, man. Like, the thing is, I, I also get in a certain extent, I don't understand it personally, that that exact situation might help someone. Yeah. And it, like, in their terms of helping, instead of having like drugs as their addiction, they'll now have an imaginary friend or a religion, to say it more kindly, as their own addiction doesn't like necessarily like change anything. It just means that they structure their life completely on something else. It's filling like a hole with something else. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. And that's what they say on. though. You can never replace it. Like people say addiction, you just change it. You don't but actually I, I like, think stuff like it. gym and I think stuff like religion to an extent is a drug. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. I, I think something that like makes you change your whole life and put everything into and only focus on that. And worship like, it in a sense. And worship it in a sense is that whole cult, like not just cult, but like uh, in a community feel. Yeah. I feel like with, I don't want to like separate people into separate groups and make them do that one thing. I want people to do everything that they want to do and it'd be cool for everyone to hang out with everyone in that space. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I think a lot of these like cults of being like gym heads or being like religious heads separates people as a whole. Yeah. Instead of bringing people together, it, it might make you introduce people into that inner sanctum, but it'll make people hate people in that sanctum, and it'll make people hate people in that sanctum, and their God's different to my God, so I've got a problem with them. When in reality, you, you're putting everything into that construct. Or even people who let tattoos define themselves. I yeah, know like yeah, me yeah. and you have tattoos, and you say, oh, you guys are talking rich, but like, I don't just hang out in tattoo communities and get tattoos every single place that I've got so that it becomes the main thing about yeah, myself. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, you know, I, I think there's a point where it's like, oh, you know what, like, oh, Joel, you just got those two birds on your arm. That's you now. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, you yeah. now. You're the guy with birds on your arms. Yeah, exactly. That's what you're about. It's even like just having an afro. I'm an afro guy now suddenly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, that doesn't define me. No. Like, whatever. I've, I've grown my hair out. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm... I'm I don't wear hats anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I, I wear hats a lot less. And I think it's left people like, oh, you're doing it like, you're trying to be a boy band. It's like, nah, just, if you see my hair when it's completely down and it's like a bowl across my, like, face, you probably understand why I just flick it over there. <laughs> I don't spend any time on it. And, like, you, you've grown your hair out, you've grown your hair out. Back yeah, when you wear like, hats all the time, I, I used to have my head shaved all the time. I used to go out in Gabby's Barbers. Yeah, we was out there, man. I was taking <laughs> Liam to the fucking Yardie Barbers and shit with me down in Campbell. I was the only we white guy We took Matt in Hoffa there as well, man. Took Matt that was Hoffa crazy. There. It was a different experience because, like, for the first time, I didn't realise I had a widow's peak. And they were, <laughs> they, they shaped up my forehead. And, like, it was completely different. Look, that was the first time. That was the first time. I'd been going to barbers in, like, Rochester and Pennington <laughs> and Kingston and areas where, like, I wouldn't just get, like, like that classic kind of haircut with the shape up of the forehead and it's interesting. I felt like I looked like the default character from WWF like... Yeah, the builder four. character guy. Yeah. But going back to this guy, just to, just to give him some form of advice or whatever, yeah. If a Christian person says, oh, you're going to hell or whatever, that shouldn't annoy you. Yeah. And if you know you're going to hell, then it really shouldn't annoy you. No. Like, and if someone said... If, so, if a Christian said that to me or whatever, i say, we'll see. You know what I mean? I'll see you. Either, I'll see you there. Yeah, I'ma see you in heaven, son. I'ma like, see, <laughs> see you in heaven. Do you know what I mean? Hold the line for me, bro. You better remember this face, cause I'ma bop in there one day. Like, where's that motherfucker who said I see you in hell? Like, God, he said that when he was alive. Demote him. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You are now banished from heaven. That would suck. I think that's the worst thing about religion. Like, why would you want to live with something that scares the shit out of you? Like. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube channels dedicated to pranks and so-called social experiments. This is perfect. So I actually like quite a few of the prank sites. Um, yeah. Not that all of them. So Troll Station, they are fucking. But brilliant. I know what you know what he's talking about when he's saying this. He yeah, doesn't yeah, mean yeah. them. He, he means, doesn't mean them. He means the guys that go to the hood <laughs> and do something like. Yo, let's go to the hood and try some gay shit with some gangsters. Okay, like, so okay, <laughs> like, on one hand, 
<laughs> they are very, very stupid. Yeah. But on the other hand, I think that is fucking massively entertaining content. Yeah, I it's think, great I, to watch. I think those kids going down and pulling up people's jeans. Yeah. Pulling up like hood dudes' jeans while they're round <laughs> their like, ankles. Yo, like if someone tried to pull up my jeans, I'd be vexed. Like girls have tried to do it to me yeah. all the time and stuff. I'm like, ha, it's cool. And I just drop them to where they are because I wear my jeans low. I don't wear them with my complete arse out, yeah. but I don't feel comfortable with my jeans fully up around my waist. If someone come up to me and just pulled them out, these guys were taking it too far, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If people just come up and whip my jeans up, You'd be very, you'd be so shot. You'd be very, <laughs> or even like the one where like um, they take people's phones out of their hands to check the time. Like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. These guys are nearly getting shot. Yeah. They like know they're going to get whacked up, <laughs> and they're going out and they're doing it anywhere to make content. I think these guys are low key heroes in a way. Yeah, like I know what you mean. I mean, it's fucking stupid, and but it's like you know, I don't respect the sort of like we're going to go to the hood and make it look bad because you know, like you know, people have got enough problems in the hood. Don't go there and antagonize them. Go do it to in the tennis court, gym club. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Some white folks activity. Yeah, but or I some think shit. like someone in Hendy's but, is just going to get fucking embarrassed and like walk away. I feel yeah, like yeah, someone yeah, yeah. like. For, for like the reaction of the video, I don't think it makes the hood look worse. I think it makes these kids look fucking stupid and crazy. But like at the same time, I've been to the, I've been to a lot of hoods, and while they are like quite like scary and intimidating places at it's times, it's still a community and shit, them, man. People yeah, live yeah, there. Yeah, I've never personally had any problem anywhere I've gone. Um, I remember when we were in Chicago, though, big teams like, yo, if it wasn't raining around here. We'd have to move a lot quicker than we are right now. <laughs> just like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. But like, Amer- like, I think certain areas of America are a little bit different. But I think, I think those like, videos, I don't think they necessarily Social experiments are a lot more of a Social problem. Social experiments, with, I like, think, is the problem. Yeah. Because this is like, people, people aren't even just it, doing them on channels. They're doing them everywhere. People are like, live streaming, I'm going to go oh, give 100%. a donut to a homeless person 100%. and shit. Like, do you know what I mean? I, oh, like, yeah. I've seen so many bad social experiments. Yeah. Like ones that like, they're just like fucking borderline offensive, man. There's one that like I actually, I think we're working with the guy who made it, so I'm yeah. not gonna go. Yeah, but that one was all. That was I liked that one. I didn't like that one. I, I liked it just because it deemed a, it was it was a good um, what it was a good one because people it was more representative of where we're at in 2016 because you know because it showed tolerance rather than it showed yeah because you had like you know like a geezer being like you need to fucking get off the train when normally he'd be like yeah you fucking poofed her in fucking 1980s or whatever yeah, yeah but yeah, nowadays yeah. it's like no nah, he can love whoever the fuck he wants right and that that was a beaut to see like a fucking Phil Mitchell stand up for a gay guy yeah, yeah. like that's a beautiful moment like you know did you see the one that was like fucking child kidnapping in China where like a little small boy he was walking I've seen a few like that sort some of thing. guy would come and grab him just run away and just no one anything yeah like I don't know if these things tell me stuff that you want to know about people man I've seen enough like fucked up videos of like do you remember the little baby that gets run over by a car no and like other Thank cars God. just keep running over it. it's in China and someone eventually comes and just picks it up and just puts it in the bin oh wait what? It's Wait, a, is it a baby a, or a oh, toddler? Don't that, show me. I don't want to see it. <laughs> it's, it's a toddler. It's, it's a toddler. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's and the, disturbing yeah, 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 yeah. as fuck. Like they fall off the back or something, and then the car runs. Over, a van runs over him. And yeah. The other cars just keep driving over. But in China, they're like, "Yo, you, you've got, you only got two kids as a fucking minimum anyway." Oh, like, do you I, know what I mean? Pe- like, like, do you reckon that that makes them like devalue the value of? Life yeah, man. That's fucking crazy. Do you know what I mean? Why else are they just running them over and shit? Right, Flip side, everyone crazy. talks about Russia being so bad. I've seen this video of how Russian drivers look out for each other and shit. Yeah, and it'd be like, they all have dash cams out there for some reason. True. So there's loads of filming. And there's like, you know, stuff like, people will literally stop their car just to get out and help an old lady cross the road out there, man. I fucking fucks with that, man. Like, yeah, I fucks with that. But then mean? I've seen a lot of hilarious like Russian road rage videos. I feel, like <laughs> a, I feel like there's a lot more videos of like Russians acting crazy and being hilarious rather than videos of them being like helpful and not being Yeah, crazy. I've seen this, this social experiment in Russia. That I'll give those those guys props they were holding hands all they were doing were holding hands in public and people would literally come up and either walk in between them or push one of them to the side and like fucking it's illegal start to on be gay shit. It's yeah. illegal to be gay in Jamaica as well so you can't just blame the Russians yeah man but like you know we shoot people <laughs> like, do you know what I mean like Ru- it, like Russia is an interesting one Russia is 100% an interesting one yeah like fucking um, but like I, I think like social experiments as a whole um they're just kind of like lazy content, man. I don't like the ones like, and and like, what are they proving at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I, I don't like. I think people who make them, 
just know they're a video that's going to bang because of the title that you can make for it, but then try to blag it's about something yeah. else. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think like, there's a thin line. I think there's like some good ones that have come from it, but generally it's like largely, largely. Yeah, man. Too. Be your own hero anyway, man. Like you do that shit. So when you're on your deathbed, you can be like, yeah, I gave that guy something to eat that day, man. Yeah. I, I lived a life right. I appreciate the hustle of people doing pranks, though. I think, like, again, it is that jackass mindset. Yeah, I think 100%. these people, they're like, okay, you know what? I'm not. I like, I can act because I can keep a straight face in this stuff. I don't know how to get into it. I don't have any friends in the industry. I don't want to do. I've got a bit of balls about me. I'm just going to bang and do it. Yeah. So I think, I think, I think to a certain extent, then people deserve some sort of respect. But again, like, obviously. Where, like, back in the day, there wasn't anywhere to put your pranks that people would see. You'd be on You've Been Framed or you're on Jackass. Like, I didn't like fucking the Welsh geese is what they were called. Dirty, Dirty Sanchez. Sanchez. Yeah, because no, they, 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 they're the perfect example of you're just going too far for the sake of getting right, the views. He nailed his dick to a piece of wood. He put his balls in the fucking uh, corner pocket. Yeah, it's not funny. Or like, oh, man. Yeah, it's I, not... look, I, I can't watch that stuff. I'm just like, yeah. allow me, allow me, allow me. Yo, speaking of fucked up videos from the internet, though, did you ever see that one? It was called, like... I don't think it was called the X Games, but it was called the Something Games, right? And it was just basically like a three-minute video of people cutting their own penises off. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. Why yeah. is that even a thing? I haven't exactly. seen it. But why is that exactly. even exist, bro? I don't know why I got to three minutes, but it was a beautiful <coughs> car, car crash. Do you remember Faces of Death? Yeah, it was on that. It was like around that sort of era and shit, man. I remember my mate, like, back in the MSN days, sent me a video. and was like, do you want to see something you can't unsee? And I was like... Ha <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Clicked on it, and it's just this video. Of this dude getting his head like held down with and a machete. Decapitated, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah. just like, oh, bruv, why have you sent me this? It ain't like in the movies. In the movies, it's like whooshing, and the head's gone. Yeah, man. In that, it's like you hacking into a fucking pig or some shit, man. It's, right. Yeah, it's disturbing. It's fucking disturbing. I remember like um, this is actually kind of a recent story. It was uh, last year or the year before. I was like. Um, I think I was like mad skinny at the time and I wasn't really eating too much and stuff. I'd been like mad stressed. I had a bit of a period like that. And um, like these videos now, I'm quite squeamish around watching those kind of videos. And uh, the specific video that my mate put on, yep. I think I'd gone, I was smoking a bit of weed and fucking watching this video. And it was a guy getting a scarification. It was a UFC dude. He's like, he's gone well over the top. He's dyed his pupils blue, gotten tattooed. Yeah. And he was getting a scarification tattoo, which was like a lightning bolt going through his face. And they like cut like the lightning bolt into his head. You know what scarification yeah, is? Yeah, so yeah, They cut it in with a scalpel, pull the skin out, and there's just this specific uh. bit where the skin's went like, and like just like pulled off. You just see this like, just like blood oh, like and a shit. scab. And like, I was watching oh. it, and I like, suddenly, do you know, that you know that feeling you're gonna get when you're about to faint? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, suddenly yeah. you feel like a little whirring moment, and you feel like you're like, so yeah. drop, and you feel a little bit weird, and you wonder in your head, am I gonna faint? And I was like, Oh, I think I need to go to the toilet. I think I need to get a glass of water. So I stood up, and as I was like walking, I was walking back towards, you had to walk through a little kitchen to get to the uh, toilet, and I just passed out. And like, I was still kind of like conscious, but my body was like convulsing and just like hitting into this like fridge or like oven. I just feel like. <laughs> you were trying to get the tattoo and shit. And then like, I could hear Liam, Liam, you're right, Liam. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, man. I think I just tripped over. Like, I'm all right. I'm cool. I stepped up, got a glass of water, and had a, uh, like a swig. And then I was walking back towards the room where everyone was. And then I just I woke up like 10 minutes later with like people just shaking me like, Liam, What Liam, the fuck? Are you all right? Are you all right? Yeah, oh, man. I've never passed out ever once in my life. I've never, ever fainted. Oh, one, one other time this happened to me. I was walking down fucking... I was going down the road with my friends, and I went to like step off, I think I might be been skateboarding, I went to step off, and you know when you roll your ankle, and yeah. like, you step on it to the side, and your ankle the next day, yeah. you're like, golf ball, done that. And uh, I walked into the corner shop, like Spiros or something like that at the time. <laughs> oh, that, that's a deep story. But like, I walked in, and like, I just passed over into one of the shelves, like come up, and then like went to leave again, and passed out again. But the deepest story about this uh, <laughs> shop, it is so deep. So like, it was like my local corner shop. Yeah. And I remember I was the paper boy for this shop. Yeah. I'd gone down between the ages of like 11 and 14, 15. I used to go and pick up the papers. I'd go and put them through the letterbox. And I used to be like a little cunt about it. It's like, if I couldn't be asked to go down the road or something, I'd just chuck them down the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it come We've back We've all done me. that. I was 100%. <laughs> but like the guy who worked in the shop, Charlie, he was just the nicest guy on earth. And yeah. he ran a shop with his wife, and his son was always there. 
and he was the loveliest guy. He yeah. was so, so sick. And then one day, um, he wasn't there. And, like, his wife wasn't there. I didn't know what happened. And suddenly, like, the family had come over from the Greece, had taken over the shop and completely yeah. changed its name to Icos. Yeah, and yeah. they completely redid the format. It didn't have the same feel. It didn't have the same friendly guy. And it turned out he got home one day, he walked into his front door and his son was hanging from the banister. Oh, my his God. His son had, like, topped himself. But and that's... Then, <laughs> Fucked story, and I remember like he then like years later after like a couple of years later, I'd just see him working in Morrison's. Oh, and he was like he wasn't this bright, happy, chappy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I remember he'd, like every time you used to see him when he walked in the shop, he was just this safe guy. It was he was free stuff and hookers up, and just one day oh, like bro. it was fucking. He walked in and just. He still lives in the house, and just fucking as soon as you walk in, the banisters there where his son's just. Why hanging. would you still live in that house? Like I think it just became like fucking. Yeah. Like, the memorial place. But Do you oh. know what? I honestly, like that's so fucked. Yeah, but I honestly thought you were gonna say yeah. He had gotten home, yeah, and like the newspaper distributors had gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you've been off on your paper rounds like for the past year and, been and it's affected business so, so bad that he's lost his job no <laughs> no 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 I hope nothing to do with me with the papers <laughs> caused the fucking son's death but yeah I mean uh, that, it's not the funniest story to tell on the show but it was just no fucking, man but it was, it, that was a very real thing that happened, man. <laughs> old Charlie man he was such a G he's such a G okay I think like we've Let's do a couple more. Let's you want to do a couple more and then we can go into people's actual stories about what they're going on about themselves. These are more things that people are annoying, but people have actually asked for genuine advice. All right, let's get stuff. into the advice because these um, seems like a lot of you people are trying to be funny and you're really not. And we're not that funny either, so we can't make you sound that funny. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, maybe we should take one from Rowan. Um, All right. Girls who ask you zero questions about your life on dates or even like when you first met someone or whatever, people who ask you zero questions about yourself this is something I was waiting to put in a like bad romance themed episode or whatever. Yeah. I don't really date. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't go to places which are like, oh, let's go talk. Like, yeah, yeah. I will establish that it's a fucking beat thing and arrange that some, someone's house is being at, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So she don't need to ask me no questions about my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? She asks me questions about other shit, but you know what I mean? Like, it's fucking just. I feel like that was me when I was a lot younger. I'm still there, bro. That's how I live life. Like, fuck a date, bro. What, do you want me to go spend money on you? Nah, man. <laughs> like, we spend money on each other, and it's called love. So, I, 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 well, I've, I've had a couple situations which have been like that in my recent years, but, like, generally... Generally, I'll go on a date or whatever, but, like, if someone doesn't ask you anything about themselves and they're just, like, chatting about the whole, the whole time, I'll just generally just keep chatting and try to throw back off them. Yeah, and that's... Yo, do you, you know the other thing, yeah? If you're in a situation of dating and whatever, yeah, yeah, let her talk, bro. Okay. Just let her talk, right? Yeah, and you're just there like, mm-hmm, yeah, that's really interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, and you know, and whatever. And you know what happens, yeah? She goes back to her mates and she's like, he was an amazing listener. He, yeah, he was yeah, the, yeah. He just was so involved in my life. Yeah, but I think, like, I think if, if you get described as an excellent listener, you might be subservient and just be, or you're just a sly little devil just waiting to be called as a good listener. You, yeah, you're just there just being like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, just nodding, like, do, 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 do. In your head, you're playing, like, we gonna fuck tonight. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, Man. My, my classic go-to as younger was, like, it was like, I, I mean, it was pretty much a Netflix and chill situation. But it yeah. was always like, when you're like 14, 15 or whatever, you'd just be like, oh, you want to come over and watch Finding Nemo or something? Do you know the amount of times that I've watched Five Minute Nemo without actually watching Five Minute Nemo? <laughs> that was like the go-to when I was younger. Yeah, it's like code names and shit. Like, hey, you want to watch Harry Potter? Jeez. Yeah, you know sticks. Mean? Like, you know what I mean? It's sadder than that. Okay, so I've, I've, there's actually quite a few people that have written into us with... Um, real-life situations. Real-life situations. Actual situations that have actually affected people at the moment. So they'd like some advice from me and you to try and get over these problems or actually know what they should do with them next. It's kind of like an agony ant comment. Sick. I'm like one of those people, like, I can give advice for days, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I can't listen to my own advice. So when I get into problems, I'm just fucked. Like, yeah. uh, do you know what I mean? Like, but you're the guy with the best advice that people yeah, need yeah, 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 when yeah. they need it. Yeah. But 
you'll probably get to the conclusion of the good advice of yourself be like, nah, fuck that, man. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. then not be able to understand when people don't take your advice and keep themselves yeah. in shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same situation. I'm so, I've got better. I think once you have a few, like, like, like uh, controlling relationships or situations that um, make you realise that you just got to do what you need to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, like, you start listening to your own advice a bit more and you stop, like, letting yourself get put in situations where you would be telling the other person, you know what? You shouldn't be doing the shit you need to get. Yeah, exactly. Out of the situation. Exactly. So after after displaying our qualifications, you know, Bam is the ultimate advice giver and me is, you know, I, I feel like I, I could probably help <laughs> a few people. And if I can't, I can probably at least point you in some sort of direction where you might be able to get help. So the first guy is hit us up. Um, he fell, I fell victim to a crime at the weekend. I had my car parked outside and a group of young'uns decided it would be totally fine to cut through the estate on a rampage and smash multiple cars up in the street, one being mine. My mate lives in the same street and his dad's a copper. By the time he, he hoyed me clo- by the time I put my clothes on, his dad was already outside putting a sharp end to the violence I had in store for them. What do I do? I, could I find out their addresses and wait for them to be home alone to, to beat them up? Or do I just let the justice system fail or prevail? Any advice is appreciated. Uh, in situations like this, I always look to my mentor and role model, Batman. And what he would say in this situation is like, you can't always expect the system to work. And if the system's going to fail you, then you've got to get justice, bro. And if you've yeah. got to get justice, yeah. Firstly, don't, don't write what you're going to do online. Um, yeah. So delete that comment. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fucking line them up one by one. You're not going to hit them in their addresses. Because that's no. stupid. You've just said that a copper lives on the road, right? On your road. You need road. to watch their movements. Yeah, you need to fucking find out where they're at school because they sound like they're little fucking skipping out school and shit. You need to find out their hangout spots. And you How know young what? are these guys? Like, I might be giving you advice that ultimately gets you stabbed or shot or killed, but what you really got to do is find the leader of that gang, yeah? And challenge him to a one-on-one in mm-hmm. front of all these other little young'uns, yeah? And just say, look, this is what you did to my car. I'm going to do it to your face. And fucking but what if these get kids are it. mad young and this guy is mad old because he's got like a car? Yeah. And if they're youngins, is he going to beat up a 15, 14 year old? If you have a son or a family member that has a younger or a younger member of family, right, what you're going to do is you're going to yeah. train him up as if you were Batman and then you'll make that into your Robin, right, and you're going to get them to go out and fight your battle for you. That's. Um, Sam so basically, advice. you feel like this situation needs to be resolved with violence. Yeah, this is a Batman situation. This is a situation where Batman would beat someone up. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, do you know what I mean? And you'd, you'd fucking you you got to fucking get the first guy and be like, "Where are they?" And fucking like, do you know what I mean? Like, find out like where the rest of them are at and shit. Yeah, and then just like. If about midnight or something, right, what you're going to do is once you've found them and you fucking beat them up and you've got them roped and tied and shit, you're going to drop them on the fucking front lawn of that copper. That's hilarious. Yeah? You're going to be standing there when he comes out in the shadows and shit and he's going to be like, what is this? And he'll be like, it's not what I do to find me or whatever, yeah? And fucking just, when he, when he looks down at the, the victims again, disappear into the night. Just disappear into the night and you're good. Yeah. I, I would probably um, find out where they live if they're too young to like do anything about, I would go to the father, I'd go yeah. to the mum and be like, look, your son smashed up my car, I need to, you, you've got to pay for this. Yeah. Um, and if the police aren't doing anything about it and they won't do anything, I, I might fight the dad. Yeah, that's the other thing, you can always fight the dad, you know? In front of the son? Yeah. So, like, his son loses faith in his whole role model. Yeah, if you got, like, when you're just, like, beating on his dad and shit, yeah, you got to look the son in the eye, like, this would have been you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you even look at the wife, like, don't make me step over there. Like, just so she knows as well. A hundred percent. You wouldn't do anything. But I mean, just... like, I wouldn't be intimidating towards women. No, I'd the whole like... family has to know, bro. If, they got a, <laughs> if they've got a dog, you fucking go take that dog's food and shit and fucking <laughs> let it know, like, everyone in that family is your bitch now, you know? like No fly zone. Yeah, like, that's it, man. Okay, so one of my mates shagged my other mate's mum. Do I tell my mate or do I wait until the day he tries to take the piss out of me in front of the boys and I wreck his whole fucking life? Wait, he shagged his mate's mum? One of his mates shagged another one of his mate's mums. Yeah. Uh, Does he tell the mate whose mum got shagged or does he wait for the day that this other guy who shagged the mum 
uh, takes tries to take the piss out of him in front of everyone else and ruin his whole life. No, because in that situation it might backfire and they might all be like, you fucking legend, mate. You fucking banged his mum. Bro, I mean? if someone had banged my mum, even if all of my friends were trying to tell me he was a legend, I would be kicking the fuck off. Yeah, you would be, but it's, you, bro, you've no got, one touches bagger mama. You, I will <laughs> fucking kill a man for bagger mama. No one is touching my mum. You've got a like no, like no. I know exactly what you mean. I wouldn't stand for it, like, but like at the same time, like, what could you do, bro? This guy's banged your mum. <laughs> Like, dude, no, bro. there's nothing you can... Unless you kill him, yeah? Oh. I, I, I would see red. I would just attack the guy. I would not be able to hold myself responsible for whatever the fuck happened. And then... He's out. Yeah, he's out of he's the group. He's out. He's no longer allowed to fucking hang out. There is no way. Yeah. I was like, yeah, never come around my house again. Never talk to me again. If you ever discuss talking, banging my mum in front of me, or I hear you bragging about it, I'm going to fucking find you, and I'll make sure that you're not able to talk anymore to talk about it. Do not touch bagger mum. You are not allowed to touch my mum or talk about my mum. No way. Do you know what? I've got the. This is the the best way that you can come out of this situation, yeah. Because both of those options are pretty fucking bitch worthy, yeah. yeah. You're either gonna sit on it until you destroy it, and then you're gonna look like a bitch because you held on to the information for that long. Yeah. And, and then the rest of your boys are gonna be like, "Why didn't you tell me that shit, bro? You could have told me. We was meant to be cool." Yeah? I feel like the information like, is gonna come out. Yeah, it's gonna come out. Yeah, but and and the other thing, you can't really tell the fucking friends whose mum it is, because that's deep, bruv. Now he's just got, he's going to be at breakfast just looking at her differently and shit, you know? Bruv. So, so, like, what you do is, right, you put an anonymous tip into Jeremy Kyle, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and you let them resolve it on public TV, because that's the best outcome. That is the best like, outcome. That's what I Although you're publicly shaming your mum. No, but he's not, is he? I'm saying this guy who knows of the whole situation just puts in the anonymous call to Jeremy Kyle. Yeah, but then, oh, so the and, other guy's mum. So he actually is... But the other guy's still gonna have to deal with it. He's, he's yeah, but on TV, and you, and it won't even look like you did anything. Oh man, but like, yeah, okay. Do you know okay, what I mean? I see the logic. I see the logic. I'd hate to be one of those guys whose mum was bare loose back in the day, bang people. Bruv, how there are you gonna people. bang one of the son's friends? Like, I even hit, remember hearing about like just girls who's back, like people's mums who weren't like friends of the people who were just bare loose and bang people, and you're just like, rah, some sketty behaviour. Yeah, but uh, then it's like, what's happened in their life for them to get to that point, and then da, 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 and then it's like, you know, like, does this... It's peak, bro. Does this mum, is? I assume it's a single mum, because if the dad's involved, then just, you just tell the dad, right? and that's the best fucking thing you can watch yeah. in that situation. Yeah, okay. Basically, yeah, just don't, don't hold on to the information. Either say something or just revel it a lie. Um, yeah, it's true. My mate came round to my house to smoke a bud and play Xbox, as you do, and was sat on the other side of the room. We started jokingly winding him up, saying that he was on Grinder rather than saying anything. He just stared into mine and my friend's eyes and paused before grabbing all of his collections and walking four miles home in a state at two in the morning. We haven't spoken since. What do I do? Now... I'm feeling like your friend was probably on Grinder. That's or, the first thing you got to worry about. Or is actually homosexual. And if you don't have any problem with homosexuals and you don't mind about it, I'll just holler the guy and be like, you know what? I didn't even mean it that way. I don't care what you are. Um, we're friends, we're friends. It's all good. But. Yeah, but is the question here. Cover your butts. Next cover sleepover. Your butt. Like, you know what I mean? Sleep up Jeez. against the walls. Like, uh, like this, why is this guy looked into your souls, collected his things, and then left, right? That is like, he's lining you up for either rape or murder. <laughs> oh yeah? my God. Like, that is the two things that is happening in that situation. He's, you really are old school. Yeah, he's going to be like, he's going to be fucking them like, who's fucking gay now, lads? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Bruh, I feel like your advice is on some traditional old school level of Brexit. No, nah, man, it's not even that. It's just solid, sound advice that you get from your old racist grandpa. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, man, like, no, nah, but yeah, watch out for that kid, like, because the, the worst thing is, the Orlando club shooter, he was a homosexual, right? He, and he was a homosexual that had to suppress his homosexuality. So the worst thing you can do in this situation is make this guy feel uneasy, or that he's got to fucking hide himself around you, because oh. that's what's going to make him go crazy and rape you or kill you. Okay, okay. Sound advice, yeah. Sound advice. Um, I work with my friend's dad and they both love drugs. Neither of them knows about the other one doing drugs and I have the power to ruin the relationships or make them best friends bonding over a few lines at family events. 
do it, man. Just fucking just lock, yeah, have it. a lock in with them, man. Just fucking. I reckon just you arrange to do drugs with each one separately and arrange it for the exact same time. Yeah, just do it, man. Like, what is the worst that could happen? Or like when you're next at their house, right? Fucking bring a small bit of cocaine with you, yeah, and then be like, oh, I just found this cocaine on the floor, and watch them both suddenly turn around like that's my, my, and watch what happens afterwards, man. Yeah. You know. Although that's, I feel like that's a less fun way to approach it. It's more of a, they both feel embarrassed. Yeah, they might do. But like, is the dad going to come to the exact same parties? I suppose work parties. Yeah, and little how, socials. Yeah, I don't know, man. Do yeah, it. I reckon. I reckon. I just invite them both to the exact same cubicle. Tell them both. <laughs> tell them both that you'll be in the cubicle, second from the right. So, and you're actually in the cubicle, fifth from the right. So you're just enjoying your own little line party, and then they'll both. One of them will have to knock on the other one in the cubicle, and they'll both end up in the same one. Yeah. With the lines out. Tell one you're going to be in in a minute, and tell the other one meet you in there. So one of them goes to rack up, the other one goes to like. This is so complicated. Oh, it's complicated, but this is like, this will actually be a hilarious turn of events because even if, they <laughs> both, even if they both suddenly like work out that they're both going to do a line and that they're together in this situation. Yeah. The lines will always be there, so the tension's gone. With your situation, it's more like, oh, that's my, oh shit, oh God. And yeah, like, but what if they're just like, shall we split it? Do you know what I mean? Then you just created a friendship. Yeah, exactly. A friendship that is not just a parenthood. It, it's, <laughs> it's sniffing lines together. Uh, fathers and sons who sniff together live together. Yeah, probably because the son can't afford to get out of that house. Possibly. Because of cocaine habits. Okay, I feel, I feel like we could probably help that guy. Uh, this, so this is something that seriously irritates this guy. My friend's girlfriend smoked 30 to 40 a day while pregnant. And she gets mad when anyone even tries to suggest her stopping smoking just for her pregnancy. She gave birth eight weeks premature, <laughs> still smokes and still will smoke around a baby. I wouldn't let her smoke in my house, which I don't let her anyway, and she got mad and left. How can I actually get it into someone's head that it is damaging to the baby? I mean, this woman's a piece of shit. Yeah, like, what you need to do is get a basket and get the baby, put it into the river with a note. And just old school it down. Moses, like, yeah, mo just that baby will go on to lead a nation eventually. Like you know, fucking. He's probably not gonna get too far with this woman. I feel like she is making some very fucking selfish cho choices. That like, look, if you want to smoke and you're not gonna fucking like care about whatever's in you, do not have a fucking baby. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, like, you know what? Don't fuck this baby up. Eight weeks premature. Like, obviously, are they gonna get to six foot? Probably not. Are they, are they likely to have a dysfunctional relationship with their mum? It probably much sounds like it. Uh, to be honest, mate, get rid of this woman. You yeah. don't need her in your life. It's you her baby, though, so she can do what she wants with it at the end of the day. It's the flip side of the coin. Yep. Okay. Um, there's a family on my road. I'm not going to lie. I live in quite a nice area. <laughs> who, have, who have a six-year-old kid, Humble and they literally bread. don't give a so shit that. about him. On his birthday, they let him run around the estate on his own and attempt to play with my son while they went fucking shopping all day and then to the pub. I went out last night at 11.30 and the kid is just cycling around the estate on his own while his old dears are sat watching TV. Should I A, report them, B, go and have a word and tell them to start acting like parents or C, ignore it, it's none of my business if he gets abducted? Oh man, this is a tough one right here. Anything you say might be incorrect. Yeah. Like... You don't go and you never tell someone else how to raise their kid because just no one ever fucking likes that. Even if you, yeah. even if you're fucking com completely correct, they're not going to listen to you. No, I don't um, think they're going to take that well on board. And on the other hand, when I was a kid, yeah, from like I, I don't know, I'm from Yorkshire or whatever, but from the age of like three or four, I was probably outside. I think I used to walk to school at like six or seven. No way, were you brother. three or four toddler just on your ones on the block? No, just outside the front all the time. But like, I Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, in, within the boundary of the even, house. Even in Yorkshire, it felt a lot more safe. I, I did used to walk to school on my own by six. I, like, I did get shown the way at first, but like, I was always out and about playing. Yeah. Like my and parents it's more were community stuff. out there, man. It like, is more you know? community out there, but like, I think it is like oh I don't know. They, I mean, they should give a shit about him. It but, sounds like you sound a little bit sort of like on your high horse. You're sort of like oh, I played with my son when they weren't about. And, and I live in a nice area. Yeah, like do you know what I mean? Like so, you know, if 
you really want to help that kid, yeah, you tell your fucking son, because you're going to keep an eye on your son, make friends with that kid. Keep an eye on If you yeah. hear anything really bad, like they hit him or something like that via your son, then cool. Call social services or yeah. whatever, yeah? But for the, for the meantime, if you really do have a concern, just sort of keep a little eye on it, because that's you, what a community should do. Do you feel like this kid's going to bring your kid down so you don't want him hanging out with your kid? Yeah, exactly. He like, might, like, may, maybe, maybe you'll become good friends with your kid. Yeah. And there's no problem with Edward's playing because maybe their parents are leaving him outside because they think, oh, that's a nice man with a nice family and his kid seems cool. I don't mind if my kid plays with him and I can just chill doing what I'm doing because my kid's making friends. And you're like, no, nah, I don't want my friends to, my kid to be friends with this little shit because yeah. I, I, I'm from a nice area. You always get that one, don't play with poor Johnny. Like, what? Not, what, my mum never poor said that. Poor Johnny. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Why Is Johnny you... poor? Yeah, he's fucking poor. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That sort of like, oh, the one with the mustard on his shirt, don't hang around with that kid. or what? You know, that weird fucking sort of, my mum isn't like that. She's a fucking head teacher, so she fucking is accepting of everyone. Mm. But like, you know what I mean? Like, that sort of thing, you know, you always get that sort of, I don't like you hanging out with so-and-so, and you're like, why? Because they broke. Like, is the, you know what I mean? Like, that sort of, but that's an yeah. old school dying out mentality of this sort of like, 100%. wealth doesn't mix with da 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 whatever, like, because at the end of the day, like, there's two ways. If, you, if you're from a more wealthy background and you're sort of... Because I like the way you say, you, I'm from a nice area, but this kid from the estate, you know? Yeah. Like, as if you're from the nice area, but he's in the estate and you don't like that, right? So um, there's this sort of thing where it's like, that's cool and whatever, but if that is the case, then really, that kid's probably going to grow up to, like, either rob your son or sell him weed, bro. Yeah. Like, you know? And he's going to hustle through life on his own. He don't need no parents. Just let him do what he's doing. He might not even be, like, you know, in trouble, bro. Mm. Maybe he told his parents they can go out. Maybe he runs the house. Well, basically, I'm sent to go and tell them, maybe judge a little. Like, I, maybe you can tell us more if we're wrong and there's actually a whole worse level of child parenting going on. But at the moment, it just looks like you're observing and being a bit too judgmental. Yeah, man. Oh, this girl, these rugby girls, they tackle by grabbing the tits. What? I've never seen women's rugby before, but she tackled her <laughs> by ripping her tits. I rate that. I fully rate that. Okay, um, we've only, like, I think that's the end of real, like, um, advice stories, but we just got a couple last things that people have been asking for. Let's just get And then I think that's probably enough for episode one. So, when you painstakingly roll a spliff perfect, then realise it's inside out. Yeah, and listen, there's nothing more annoying. Things that rank more annoying as being a stoner would be when your lighter stops working. Yeah. And you can't, you're too high to go shop or whatever. No more Rizla. Yeah, no more Rizla. Like, that's always up there. Or the worst one is when you roll a zoo, it looks like it's stuck perfectly. Did he say, and it comes unstuck? Yeah. Or is, no, he's saying it's when it's backwards. Yeah. Yeah. No, fuck that. That's your own mistake for being too high. And not, I always, I triple check Rizla sometimes. I'm there like, and if it's too dark, I shine it in the light and see the reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, yeah. yeah. You got, that's your own fucking fault. Yeah, if that's happening, mate. But what is annoying is when you've bought a sound pair of Rizla and whatever and you do that and it just uh, it, it hasn't stuck like and you've you've licked it and whatever and it just has lost its stickiness and stuff. Yeah. And then you've got to re-roll. I hate that shit the most. Yeah. I haven't, yeah. I mean, I've covered all those things. The only thing that I probably would think is even more annoying is like uh, either back in the day when it was like that waxy weed shit. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking drop. Or the sandy stuff. Or B when you don't have a grinder or it, it's actually worse in the grinder and the weed is too wet to springe and it's like takes yeah. so fucking long and it doesn't burn properly and it doesn't taste good yeah and just yeah i mean those things are all very all of great. those things um when you're stood still looking at items on a supermarket shelf and a fat couple stand directly in front of you to look at the same product while completely blocking your view yeah i hate that shit again i hate fat people so what can you do there's nothing i'm not i'm not ashamed to say that because i'm not fat I haven't noticed that situation for myself personally. And I'm not going to fat shame anymore, but like, generally I'll just like move around. Like, I hate when you're, ah, oh, so this is something I hate is when you're like standing, looking at something, about to grab it, and someone just like walks in front of you or like leans in front of yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Especially I have when, to go for a little walk. Especially when you're standing like, when you're trying to be like on that side of the aisle, like you're like, I'm right up against the DVDs. There wasn't even space to walk through here. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. Fucking annoying. Or someone like, when you're just about to go at the cash machine and someone decides that it's suddenly become a walkway and they yeah, walk yeah. right in front of you. Yeah, like, no, I can't on, stand that. Uh, when you hold the door open for someone and they just walk past without saying thanks. I, I, I say 
thank you really loudly. See, I don't do that. I don't ever do that. Oh, yeah, that's all right, mate. Cheers. Yeah, it pisses me off. It does piss me off. I, I just, I'm over the top. I just like say, yeah, thanks. Any situation where I yeah. am courteous, courteous to someone else and they don't respond or don't like acknowledge me, I just very passive aggressively say thank you very, very loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, do you know what I do sometimes, yeah? I fucking, <laughs> um, I need to not be in public. I, like if someone does something, like barge past me in the tube and they fucking think that they've gotten away, you ain't gotten away, son. I will fucking catch up with you and fucking push you over. And I'll be like, oh, sorry, like that guy on the tube. This guy on the tube recently, he yep. was taking up all the arm space for the whole thing. And I kept trying to get some back and he kept trying to push me back. So at the end of it, I had my rucksack and I just swung it into his face. As, and I was like, <laughs> like, like is it, you know, like when you're trying to put it on and you swing it around behind you. But I'd done that basically. I'd done it into his yes. face and then was like, oh, sorry, mate. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Like, you know, you've got to take little victories when you can. I, I, f I feel like everything that you do is uh, a slight bit uh, passive aggressive. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's part of your character. I to, to be honest, I like I will purposely body check people on uh, two platforms. Yeah. Especially if I'm listening to Grime, I'll be walking down, <laughs> and if people like do not move out of the way or don't allow any space, I'll just body check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone fell over the other day and then started shouting, oh, are you fucking brilliant. And I was just like, what, mate? You didn't move out of the way. Yeah, you exactly. walked into me. It's not my fault you fell over. Yeah, it's your own fault for not being a stronger person. Tubes, rush hour, it's all annoying. That's the biggest But one. at the end of the day, I feel like I feel like we've probably given enough advice for one week. Yeah, I feel like this has been a good fucking introductory session right now, man. I feel like this is the introduction. This is the introduction to Bad Company. We're going to be developing a whole lot of different like uh, verticals to the show, looking at bad script writing, bad movies, and consistently having one other member of uh, a guest on the show to talk about yeah. it and go through life with us. Uh, I feel like the advice section has always got to be in there. Yeah, every episode will do advice, and you'll know. And the thing is, the advice will be themed onto what we start to theme episodes on, so it'll be a bit easier oh, to, like, you know, give give situations and scenarios to us and stuff, man. But we're uh, we're now online. We've got um, we're, we're obviously on iTunes. We're gonna set up. We've, so we've got the tweets. If you want to tweet us, you can tweet us at, at Bad Company Tweet, or you can hit me on at Body Bagnall or Bam on at Joel Watts Online. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna hope to do these every fortnight. So tune in next time. We hope you enjoyed this one. And if you want to contact us, you know the what place. And leave feedback on this one. Let me know. Let us know what you um, felt about it all. Yeah, boy. All right. Cool. 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 Cool.